I had this one friend, Ricky. We called him Sticky because he suffered from a condition called PGAD. It basically makes you have uncontrollable orgasms. And I remember when I used to be mad and embarrassed hanging out with him. But after a while, you just get used to it. <laughs> Yo, this jacket looked flyer than a motherfucker. But there was this one time we got pulled over for driving 60 in the neighborhood. Ricky was behind the wheel, and he tried to explain to the officer that he was uh, climaxing while driving, and that caused him to go above the speed limit. But it didn't really help, and it just made us both look bad. Then we ended up having to go to jail. <sighs> but the jail was full, and instead of spending the night there, we had to go to the prison. Now, I think this is a good time to mention that Ricky had a baby face, pudgy cheeks, Smooth skin, the whole nine. So imagine a prison cat seeing Ricky saw featured ass walking in. They will look at him and just see a dinner plate. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I've heard of prison and all of the, well, rape. So while we were walking to our cell, I could hear Ricky starting to moan a little bit. Then I looked at him with the most serious face I could possibly make and just told him, Dude, you better not lose control. Then he looked at me, and he was biting his lip, trying to hold it back. Fortunately, he only let out a peek, so it wasn't loud, and the majority of the inmates didn't hear anything. But there was this one guy, who smelled blood. Hmm? We make it to our cell, and then we see some guy in prison orange just walk by. No guard with him or anything. I mean, he was just aimlessly wandering the halls. So I asked the guard about him. He just told me that he's been there ever since he started working the job, and the rest of the staff just stays out of his way and lets him be. He also told me that they weren't too sure, but they thought his name was Kane. Then he just closes our cell and walks off. Now, Kane was a very intimidating guy. He was about 6'8", and just walked around with chains wrapped around him, and he just had them ominously dragging across the floor. And whenever he would walk by a plant or something, the shit would just die. So we make it through most of the night with no accidents. And then around 12 a.m., Ricky starts to shake uncontrollably. And then he starts moaning a little bit. <sighs> hey, yo, it sounds fun up in that cell. I told Ricky to think about sledding to help ease his erection, but it was already too late. Yeah. <laughs> you needn't worry, my love. These bars can't separate us forever. Luckily, that was his last climax of the night. And after hours of restlessness, I found myself drifting off and then eventually captured in the clutches of slumber. I awoke the next morning, thankful for the reamless night. I turned to Ricky to convey my newfound appreciation of an unencroached anus. But Ricky was gone. And then, that's when I heard his moan. But from another cell. Yeah. It's been 25 years, and I haven't seen Ricky since.